It has been a wild 24 hours of news. Not only are residents still processing the stunning developments after the mayor's departure, but advocacy groups tell us this could set the city back at a time when so many complex issues urgently need to be addressed. That's blowing me away. The scandal that. nobody saw coming from a mayor elected eight years ago on the promise of ending the drama at City Hall. Today, Toronto buzzing with the news that has now made international headlines. It's funny, I was just in a coffee shop and Everybody was talking about it. I think most people are surprised that it happened so fast that he, he just seemed to jump on it. Frankly, I think mean, it was time anyway. <laughs> this was not an uncommon sentiment. Despite winning a third term less than four months ago, so many Torontonians tell us they're ready for a change. I think looking at Tory's run, you can't look back and say that he really made a dent in anything. Um, so I think, yeah, it's a good opportunity for some change, but I can't believe it happened the way it did. The resignation comes at a critical time for the city. In recent weeks, the mayor has faced growing pressure to address an uptick in violence on the streets and the TTC, the deepening homelessness crisis and the rising cost of living. But it was a personal affair that took him down. I think it's unfortunate um, that it wasn't a bigger issue, like his unwillingness to look out for unhoused people in our city, other social issues. Um, I can't believe it's ending this way. This year's budget has not yet passed and includes a contentious increase in police funding. Having been in the civil service and knowing the level of effort that goes into getting to this point in the budget process, just ripping it up would actually set the city farther behind. That doesn't mean it can't be tweaked. There are a lot of issues in Toronto right now. And what do you what do you think the priority should be here? OK, so that's actually kind of simple. Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. We have a housing crisis. Jennifer Keysmat ran in the 2018 election against Tory. Are you considering running again? Uh, no, I'm not considering running again. This is an opportunity for the city. We missed out on having a really good debate in the last election because we had a powerful incumbent. Now looking forward, let's actually have that conversation. This should be a moment of rich, rich civil discourse and dialogue. Advocacy group Progress Toronto is already preparing to campaign in a by-election for a progressive mayor. We've had a number of years of, of conservative rule at City Hall and it hasn't been working, right? The city is actually in a worse place now than it was, you know, a decade ago. In October's municipal elections, five new progressive candidates were elected to city council. Those candidates were elected in parts of the city that traditionally people thought didn't elect progressives, you know, in South Etobicoke, in North Scarborough, um, we got candidates in. So you think there is an appetite for a progressive mayor right now? I think there's a huge appetite for change. City Council is set to debate Tory's budget on Wednesday. It will be the first under the new strong mayor powers. For City News, I'm Tina Yazdani.